This week in comic book horror, we've got another batch of haunted comics hitting the shelves this Wednesday, December 15th, 2021. <laughs> Welcome back to M.L. Miller Frights. I'm M.L. Miller. Before we begin, please do me a favor and punch that like button down below. Share this video with all of your social media addicted pals. Click subscribe to this channel and ring that bell for notifications. Let's check out this week in comic book horror, December 15th, 2021. Rockabilly Monsters, number one, is from Second Sight Publishing. The story is by Jose Cruz with art by Sergio Rios. A group of classic Universal monsters put their differences aside and follow a cute gal in search of her family. The twist? They're all engine revving, boot stomping, guitar plucking, rockabilly versions of the Universal monsters. Being a fan of rockabilly, and of course monsters, this book has me interested. The Army of Darkness, 1979, number 4, is from Dynamite Entertainment. The story is by Rodney Barnes, with art by Tom Garcia. This has been a fun series, which has taken full advantage of the late 70s culture in New York by plopping a time-traveling modern-day Ash into the mix. In this issue, Ash takes on Disco Deadites in the heart of all debauchery, Studio 54. How can you not be intrigued by that premise? Edgar Allan Poe's Snifter of Death, number three, is from Ahoya Comics. The story is by Tom Pyre and Bruce Abood, with art by Greg Scott and Rick Geary. It's another stab at satirical retellings of classic Edgar Allan Poe's best works. This issue gives a Poe spin on Frankenstein, as well as a look at mad dumb science involving leeches. Sounds like a whole lot of twisted fun. Bountiful Garden, number four, is from Mad Cave Studios. The story is by Ivy Noel Weir, with art by Kelly Williams. The intergalactic nightmare continues as our young crew continues to explore a seemingly harmless Eden of a planet, but horrors lurk under the surface and have now invaded their starship. I met artist Kelly Williams this past week at C2E2, and he seemed like an awesome dude. Having picked up the first few issues of this series, I'm looking forward to catching up on the sci-fi horror fun this series exudes from every page. Elvira Meets Vincent Price, number four, is from Dynamite Entertainment. The story is by David Avalone, with art by Justin Samu. This is the final issue as Elvira and the ghost of Vincent Price fight to save the world against evil forces with only the final copy of Price's lost horror film as a weapon. Can this unearthed film save the world? And will Elvira be able to keep everything in her gown while doing it? Find out in this surprisingly fun little horror adventure. We Ride Titans, number one, is from Vault Comics. The story is by Trey's Dean, with art by Sebastian Pires. Take a bit of Fast and Furious and add a heaping spoonful of Pacific Rim, and it looks to be exactly what We Ride Titans has to offer. I love that cover, and while the premise is derivative, I'm curious to see what this one has to offer. Purgatory, number three, is from Dynamite Comics. The story is by Ray Fox, with art by Alvaro Saraseca. Purgatory takes a trip down the Nile and runs into a coven of witches out for her pretty crimson head and ready to haunt her even after she murderizes them. Plus, there will be multiple covers filled with rosy red ass and titties. The Rush, number two, is from Vault Comics. The story is by Cy Spurrier, with art by Nathan Gooden. More frontier horror as a mother refuses to accept her son's death and ventures into dangerous uncharted territory filled with monsters, natives, and madmen. I really need to track this one down. Spurrier is one hell of a writer, and the art looks top tier. There's not enough western horror out there in my opinion, so this one needs my attention. Serial number 9 is from Abstract Studio. The story and art are by Terry Moore. Our serial killer hunter Zoe finally faces off against another psychopath who equals her power and intellect. This has continuously been a devious little gem of a series with fun attention to feeling and character, which is no easy feat with a lead who is a psychopath herself. Fans of Terry Moore are already all over this, and if you've never read Terry Moore, you really should. 
Vampirella, and Dracula. Unholy, number one, is from Dynamite Entertainment. The story is by Christopher Priest, with art by Donnie Hadi Wijaja. Vampy and her new husband are on their honeymoon. Where does an intergalactic vampire and her new husband go? Well, Castle Dracula, of course. Christopher Priest returns to Vampirella with a new series promising solid writing, hard-edged horror, and sweet, soft... Ass, ass, titties, titties, ass, and titties. Out number three is from Artisans, Writers, and Artists, or AWA Upshot. The story is by Rob Williams, with art by Will Conrad and Marco Lesko. I've followed this book from the beginning, and it's really great. Basically, it's a dark and diabolical Hogan's Heroes without the laugh track, and then add some vampires. The art is moody, and the story is wonderfully told. Can't wait for where the next issue goes, as a Comanche soldier seems to be stuck right in the middle of Nazis, vampires, and his fellow soldiers who resent and disrespect him. Mega number one is from Red 5 Comics. The story and art are by Salvador Sanz. While this is an obvious riff on Godzilla, I'm all about that finely detailed art. There's something about intimate and detailed widespread destruction in comics that gets me going. This one has a giant monster awakening in the Arctic, while another waking up in the middle of the ocean, with both threatening to meet in the middle and destroy a lot of real estate. I'm looking forward to this kaiju blockbuster big time. May's book number four is from Dark Horse Comics. The story and art are by Jeff Lemire. With the life of his long-thought-dead daughter at stake, a man and a dog attempt to master a labyrinth reflective of his daughter's obsession with puzzles and mazes. Lemire is killing it with this soulful and melancholy series. The Walking Dead Deluxe number 29 is from Skybound. The story is by Robert Kirkman with art by Charlie Adlard. Looks like this is the issue where we see just how twisted the governor really is. From what I recall, this was a harrowing chapter in one of the best comic book series ever put to print, now reprinted in full color. We Have Demons number three is from Comixology. The story and art are by Scott Snyder, with art by Greg Capullo. Bringing the first art to this story to an end, This issue involves a dramatic battle between demons and angels with our leads caught right in the middle. The team that reinvigorated the Bat Universe is taking on apocalyptic terrors, and it's not to be missed. Any of these new comics interest you? Let me know which ones down in the comments. That'll be it for today. Please chime in down below in the comments and let me know how on the nose or mind-numbingly wrong I am, or you can counter with your own review. So guys, you know how YouTube works. I'd love to be able to dedicate more time to this channel. I'm not monetized yet, so if you want to help me out, remember to hit all the pertinent bells and whistles down below. Want some spooky comics to read? I have two new horror comic book trade paperbacks you should look out for. Both Grave Trancers and Pirouette, collecting never-before-published issues, can be found in only the finest of comic book shops. If you're looking for written reviews, you can find them on my website, mlmillerwrites.com. If you really want to show your support, I also have a Patreon page at ML Miller. Look for the link to my Patreon page down below. Thank you so much for your time, and take care. Stuck inside your reality, your